and welcome to this video on Edexcel Topic 3 Redox 1. My name is Chris Harris and I'm from AllowyTutors.com uh, and this video is basically we're just going to do a quick overview um, of the topic of Redox 1. Uh, this legacy is for Edexcel and um, the slides that I'm going to be using here um, you can purchase if you just click on the link in the description box you can get a hold of them there they're really good value um, and you can actually um, get all the rest of them as well for this, this series of videos on there um, you can print them off you can look on your smartphone you can cycle through the slides whenever you want it's like a little revision guide in electronic form so it's really good value so please you know take a look if you if you like what you see on here okay so like I say these are specifically for Edexcel and they match the specification points as you can see on here and um, so if you study Edexcel this should be perfect for you okay so let's look at reduction and oxidation so basically electrons are transferred when reduction and oxidation occurs so we can use the acronym oil rig um, to help understand what is happening you might have heard of this before so oil rig stands for oxidation is loss of electrons and reduction is gain of electrons so it's all about electrons with redox. Okay, so this reaction, um, we've got calcium reaction with oxygen. It's completely been burnt. Um, and we've got reduction and oxidation happening in this equation. And so we call this uh, reaction a redox reaction. And I'll show you because we're going to split it up into uh, the reduction step and the oxidation step. So you can see here, the calcium is being oxidized. So the calcium is going from Ca to Ca2+. Plus. So it's being oxidized because it's losing electrons. So it's giving up the electrons. Whereas your um, oxygen is actually being reduced because it is gaining electrons. So you can see here the oxygen is gaining two electrons to form O2 minus. So oxygen is being reduced. Now, reducing agents lose electrons. Okay, this is where it gets a little bit confusing. And are oxidized themselves. Okay, so calcium in this case is the reducing agent because it has been oxidized itself. And obviously oxidizing agents, these gain electrons and are reduced themselves. So make sure you kind of know them. It gets a little bit confusing here because we've got oxidation and reduction happening and oxidizing agents and reducing agents. So make sure obviously you know the difference between the two. Okay, so oxidation numbers. Um, but basically, we can take a, an element or um, an element that's bound with another element uh, and we can give it an oxidation number or also known as an oxidation state. But we have a set of rules that we need to know. Okay, Uncombined elements um, are always zero. So things like Cl2, Fe, O2, these are all always zero. Uh, ions. Uh, is basically the oxidation number is the same as the charge on the ions. So for example, Cl minus is minus one. Ca uh, Ca two plus is plus two. Uh, group ones always plus one. So for example, potassium and potassium chloride. Group twos are always plus two. For example, calcium and calcium oxide. Aluminium is always plus three. For example, aluminium and aluminium oxide. Hydrogen is plus one, except in hydrides where it's minus one. So, for example, HF, hydrogen is plus one. But here's an example of a hydride. Hydride is just hydrogen bonded to a metal. So, like a group one metal, for example, which is sodium. So, that's sodium hydride. So, here, hydrogen is minus one. Chlorine is minus one, except in a compound with F and O. Okay, and it would have a positive value. So, for example, chlorine here is minus one because it's bonded with the potassium, so it's potassium chloride. But chlorine has a value of plus three in things like ClF3. So, because it's bonded with fluorine, fluorine holds a value of minus one. Chlorine must be plus three because we've got three of them. Uh, and like we've seen there, fluorine is always minus one. So, that's easy. So, potassium fluoride is always minus one. And finally, oxygen. Um, oxygen is minus two, um, except it's minus one in peroxides and plus two in OF2. So, for example, in lithium oxide, oxygen is minus two. So it's Li, because Li is plus one, because it's group one, uh, and oxygen is minus two. But oxygen has the value of minus one in H2O2, because that's hydrogen peroxide. Again, the word peroxide means for every oxide. So we've got hydrogen for every oxide. Two hydrogens, two oxygens. That's where the peroxide comes up. That's pretty clever. Um, so, yeah. So, this is your um, rules here. And, obviously, OF2 
Fluorine always has a value of minus one, so oxygen must be plus two in OF2. So as long as you know these rules. Okay, so let's use these rules to work out some oxidation states. So what we're gonna do is work out the oxidation state of the elements in red. So here we've got NH3. Hydrogen is in group, uh, hydrogen, obviously the rule of hydrogen is plus one. So nitrogen must be plus minus three, sorry, uh, because we've got three lots of plus one. So nitrogen is minus three to make sure it balances. So that's rule six. Let's look at this one, H2S. Again, hydrogen's plus one, we've got rule six there. Two of them, so that's plus two. Sulfur must be minus two for it to balance. So that's rule six. Oxygen, O2. Now this is an uncombined element, so it's always zero. So that's dead easy. Rule one. Uh, H2O2, here's the exception. Look, oxygen okay, is minus two, except it's minus one in peroxides. So this is a peroxide, so it's minus one. So it's rule six and nine. Okay, H2SO4, so the oxidation state of sulfur. Oxygen is minus two, because um, that's the rules there. We've got four of them, so that's minus eight. Hydrogen is plus one. We've got two of them, so that's plus two. So minus eight and plus two, whatever's left here is plus six. So sulfur, in this case, is plus six. SO4, two minus. Right, you've got to be careful this one. Oxygen's minus two. We've got four of them, so that's minus eight. But look at the overall charge. The overall charge is minus two. So this number here, basically these two oxidation states must add up to this charge here, okay? So all the oxidation states must add up to the overall charge of the molecule. So in this case, oxygen is minus two. We've got four of them, so that's minus eight. Sulfur is plus six. So um, because if we do minus eight plus six, that gives us the total charge of minus two. Okay, transition metals have variable oxidation states, which make them um, a little bit difficult, I suppose. But luckily, we've got a system to name them. So you can see here, this is iron oxide. Now, iron, in this case, has an oxidation state of plus three, because oxygen is minus two. You've got three of them, so that's minus six. Uh, two ions is plus six, so each individual ion is plus three. Uh, but we can use this, obviously, to this kind of... Uh, method to name it so iron oxide if we put in roman numerals the three bit that means it's iron three oxide okay so we've got a plus three charge in the iron and that's what the roman numerals represent now you can see what i mean when you see this example this is another iron oxide except you can see clearly the formula is different oxygen is minus two so ions plus two in this case this is iron plus two so when we write it as a word we put iron two oxide. And again, the Roman numerals tell us the oxidation state of the transition metal before it. So this is iron two. Now, obviously all ions, all metals are plus, have a plus oxidation state. So this means it's plus two. Uh, look at this example, vanadium. Right, this one we call vanadium uh, four oxide because vanadium has an oxidation state of plus four. You can see here that we've got uh, oxygen is minus two. Uh, that means vanadium must be plus four to give an overall state of plus two. Um, whereas if you look at this one, vanadium, this is vanadium five oxide. So vanadium, again, oxygen has got minus two. Two lots of minus two is minus four. So to make an overall positive, vanadium must be plus five. So this is called vanadium five oxide. Okay, we can use these oxidation numbers to work out if something is going to be oxidation or reduction. Okay, a reduction is a, a reduction is a decrease in oxidation number, and oxidation is an increase in oxidation number. So let's look at this equation here. We've got Na reacting with Cl2 to form NaCl. If we work out our oxidation numbers, we can tell which bit's been oxidized and which bit's been reduced. So there's the oxidation numbers. Obviously, sodium and chlorine are elements. Sodium's plus one and chlorine's minus one. You can see here, sodium has been oxidized because it's increased its oxidation number from zero to plus one. Chlorine has been reduced because there's a decrease in oxidation number from zero to minus one. So it's pretty straightforward. And reducing and oxidizing agents, remember, sodium is the reducing agent in this case because itself has been oxidized. And chlorine is the oxidizing agent because itself has been reduced. So just remember them very, very carefully think about it before you write down what's an oxidizing, what's a reducing agent. Okay, so let's have a look at this example here. Okay, so remember we've got these reduction as a decrease in oxidation number and oxidation is an increase. 
Let's write down these oxidation states. This time we're going to look at chlorine in particular, because this is a special type of reaction. Chlorine at the start has got an oxidation state of zero. But you see how chlorine now appears in two different forms as a product. You've got ClO minus, where chlorine is plus one, and Cl minus, where it's minus one. Now you can see here, this is showing oxidation and it's showing reduction. Now this has been obviously reduced and oxidized simultaneously. Um, there's a decrease in oxidation state from zero to minus one and an increase from zero to plus one. So this reaction shows chlorine being simultaneously oxidized and reduced. And we call this reaction a disproportionation reaction. Okay, so try and say that one quick. Okay, so make sure that you obviously know um, what the name of this is and make sure you're looking out for things like this. Okay, so balance and half equations. Right, half equations show reduction and oxidation stages in two equations. Okay, so all half equations have electrons in them. So that's what you're looking for. So let's go through some rules here. So the first thing we need to do is write down the species before and after a reaction. We then balance any atoms apart from oxygen and hydrogen. These will be dealt with later. Then we balance any oxygens with water. We balance any hydrogens with H plus ions. And then finally, we balance any charges with electrons. Now, you can see here, we've got little asterisks next to three and four. Sometimes you might not have to do these steps. It depends on the equation that you've got. But we'll come to that when we look at some examples. Okay, so let's look at this one. We're going to write a half equation showing the conversion of Fe2 plus to Fe3 plus. And we're going to use these rules here. The first thing we need to do is write down the species before and after the reaction. So we've got Fe2 plus going to Fe3 plus. We're then going to balance any atoms uh, apart from oxygen and hydrogen. And you can see here, we've got we're already balanced, so we don't need to do anything. Uh, balance any oxygens. We don't have any oxygen, so we don't have to do anything. And likewise with hydrogen, we don't have any hydrogen, so we don't have to do anything with that. So you can see there, we've skipped them steps out. But the final one, we balance any charges with electrons. And you can see here that we've got a 2 plus charge and a 3 plus charge here. An electron is a negative charge, so we stick it on that side. That basically turns this side into 2 plus, and that is 2 plus. So now it's balanced. Now that's fine, because this is showing oxidation only. Remember, oxidation is the loss of an electron. So we're losing electrons, so this is oxidation. Now for this to happen, we need an oxidizing agent. Um, and we're going to see an, an example of an oxidizing agent on the next slide. Okay, so let's look at this oxidizing agent, which is MnO4- going to Mn2+. So this is manganate, it's a classic oxidizing agent. So write down the species before and after, and you can see there it is there, MnO4- to Mn2+. We're going to balance any atoms apart from oxygen and hydrogen. Now, they're already balanced, because obviously it's just the manganate we're looking at, so that's already balanced. Now we need to balance any oxygens with water. Now you can see on the left we've got four oxygens, so we need four oxygens on the right. So we're going to add four waters on the right-hand side of this equation. There it is. And then we're going to balance any hydrogens with H+. Now you can see here that we've got four times two, eight hydrogens on this side. So we're going to need eight on this side to balance it out. There it is. And now what we have to do is balance the charges. If you look on the total charges on this side, it's plus seven, because that's a minus, and that's eight pluses, so it's plus seven on this side. And on this side, it's plus two. So to make sure they're balanced, we need to bring this down to plus two. So we're gonna add five electrons on the left-hand side to make sure it balances. And that's your balanced half equation. This is shown the reduction step. Okay, so like you say, we had oxidation in the first one, and this is reduction. So what we can do is we can combine these two half equations we've just made to make a full ionic equation, okay? So we're gonna combine these half equations. So for two half equations, we can combine them to make a full ionic equation. You have just gotta make sure your electrons balance. So remember from the first slide that we looked at um, out of the last two, uh, this one shows oxidation. This is Fe2 plus going to Fe3 plus. And there was our reduction equation that we did on the previous slide. So basically, we're going to combine these two to come up with a full ionic equation. You can see the electrons don't balance. So what we need to do is we need to multiply the top equation by 5 to make sure the electrons balance. Now, this is just a simultaneous equation. So um, for those of you who do A-level maths, or even if you did GCSE maths, you did simultaneous equations, then you'd recognize this. 
okay? So this is, you see, this is where you're using similar terms equations. So when you did them in lessons, you thought, what was the point of this? Here's the point, you see? Right, so um, we multiply that top one by five and we rewrite it out with the bottom. Everything is multiplied by five, including the ions, and you can see there. Once we've got the electrons now balanced, or we've got the same number, then what we have to do is just cancel them out. Okay, and we combine the two equations. So everything on the left-hand side of both equations of the arrows, we put down here, and anything on the right-hand side of both equations, we write out. So there it is there, okay? Very important, you mustn't have any electrons in the final equation. They must have been cancelled out in this process here. Okay, and this is your full ionic equation. It's showing both reduction and oxidation. So this is a redox reaction. We've got the oxidation and the reduction one. We've combined them to form our redox ionic equation. And that's it. That's a, 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 just a quick overview of topic three, redox one for Edexcel. Um, again, um, please support this channel. Um, if you want to keep up to date and if you want to, uh, with the new videos and updated videos, just subscribe. If you click on the circle in the middle of the screen now, uh, you can subscribe to the channel. And... Um, just a reminder that you can purchase these um, uh, PowerPoints. Um, you can use them as revision to supplement your revision that you've got. Just click on the link in the description box and be able to get a hold of them there. But that's it for now. Bye-bye.